Polonia are o economie de 430 de miliarde de euro, cea mai mare dintre țările foste comuniste din Uniunea Europeană, fiind pe locul al 8-lea în blocul comunitar. Polonia este singura țară europeană care a continuat cu creșterea economică și în timpul crizei majore care a lovit puternic America și Europa. Districtul de business din Varșovia impune respect și admirație. Zgârie norii din sticlă se ridică din mijlocul palatelor clasice și vorbesc despre ambiția și energia cu care polonezii au adoptat progresul. Când cauți startup-uri la Varșovia, ai senzația că ești un copil rătăcit în magazinul de jucării. Aici am găsit Doc Planner, o firmă care a reușit să strângă finanțări de 34 de milioane de dolari de la investitori internaționali în cei 4 ani de când a fost înființată. Un serviciu online care pune în legătură medicii cu pacienții, Doc Planner merge pe un model de business asemănător cu ceea ce face Booking.com în turism. Lansat în expansiune puternică, startup-ul din Varșovia operează deja în 30 de țări, dintre care 10 aduc venituri tinerei companii. Pe Peter Bialo, director financiar și cofondator al Doc Planner, l-am întâlnit la sediul firmei de la Varșovia. Peter însuși are o poveste de viață care parcă se confundă cu succesul economic al Poloniei. Familia sa era persecutată de regimul comunist și, când el avea doar 6 ani, au plecat în Canada. Acum Peter s-a întors în Polonia să facă afaceri de zeci de milioane de euro. 17 milioane de vizitatori unici, 5-6 milioane de profile de medici înregistrate, 250.000 de programări la doctor și 25.000 de medici plătitori de servicii pe Doc Planner. Acestea sunt, pe scurt, cifrele actuale ale companiei poloneze. So I'm Peter Bialo, I'm a co-founder, board member and CFO of DocPlanner.com, which is a uh, international marketplace for uh, patients looking for doctors. My family left Poland in 87 when it was still communist times, so my dad was uh, kind of an active in the, in the solidarity movement, and so he was uh, kind of persecuted after he left jail, and so uh, it wasn't super promising for us here at the time, and it didn't look like it was going to fall apart anytime soon. So. He, for the benefit of us, he decided to, to, to move the family. Um, for me, it was always interesting to come back and just, just to um, get a feel for the culture, much different from Canada, obviously. Canada is very comfortable, very easy life, but here there's more, uh, Europe, I just felt a more, um, more pull towards Europe, yeah? Just because different culture, is more history, um, something about the people, yeah? And so, and so decided to come back, and it's been about five, six years now since I've been back. So um, definitely um, enjoyed here and uh, happy to help build Doc Planner internationally. So Doc Planner is uh, started off as a listing service of doctors. Um, so it gave you, uh, like Yelp does, for example, give you listings of all the doctors in a given market. Yeah. Um, then we added opinions to that, so patients could leave opinions. So we we're like a source of information for patients. Um, and then we subsequently sort of went from that, you could say, TripAdvisor model and we've moved towards a transactional model. So we added the ability for patients to actually make a booking online, and we became sort of like a booking.com for healthcare space, yeah? And uh, on top of that, we do have a basic calendar management tool for doctors to use in the background. It's a cloud, you could say SaaS, uh, very simple sort of agenda management tool. So a doctor can leave behind his pen and paper or his Outlook calendar or Google calendar and use the Doc Planner software to manage his clinic. In addition, he's getting patients from the from the online uh, website and bookings through that channel. Basically, we we started out as a uh, like I mentioned a, a website where um, patients really wanted to visit to get just more information, more basic information. Um, what we did is we sort of really focused on SEO and really making sure that the that the site is positioned well. And so, as a result of that, that investment in SEO. Um, our positions are really high in Google, right? And so when a patient looks for a doctor, um, but, and the most frequent type of search is specialization plus city, those types of combinations, um, Doc Planner comes out really high in terms of Google rankings, right? The algorithm picks us up. So it's a, it's a combination of the site structure, um, the, the, the history of the website, the keywords that we use on our website, and a lot of it stems from the fact that we do have a lot of good opinions on the website. Yeah? So Google gives those, those keywords that are in those opinions um, quite high uh, credit. In terms of the business model, um, Doc Planner charges doctors for a premium product, a premium profile, which enables them to post their calendar online basically and accept patients online. So basically it reduces um, phone calls to the, to, the, to the office, to the clinic. It enables patients to book online 24 seven. 
It also, um, once a booking is made, um, we send reminders to that patient about upcoming visits. So it reduces the, the, the absence rate, the no-show the no rate is what we call it in the healthcare space, um, which is quite high in, in, in the healthcare space, which the doctors struggle with. They, they get frustrated because they have a slot, they meet the patient, and somebody doesn't show up. And then they have another one. It's a, it's a big it's a big loss of time. Yeah, so that's what the doctors are basically paying for: um, ability to attract additional patients, um, operational efficiencies, and third is like a little tool for their for their calendar for the practice management basically. And the thinking is potentially in the future we can also add a payment option, so you pay online before the visit, which makes sure that you're actually going to attend because you've already paid. Um, so you pay in advance. Yes, and... you pay through through the website in advance. Yeah. Doc planner is free, yeah, for, for the patient. Obviously, they pay the doctor during their visit, during the consultation. Um, two, it's a comprehensive source of information. So we list all of the doctors in a given market on the platform. So you don't have to visit 10 different sites, 10 different clinic sites, for example. We also try to be objective, yeah. So we, um, we encourage patients to leave real opinions and we moderate every single opinion. Yeah, so we, we, we have 10 criteria that we use to, to monitor whether an opinion is acceptable or not. So stuff like offensive language is not tolerated. Um, really try to ensure that the, um, that the opinions are credible yeah, and authentic. Um, so that means that other visitors, other patients have access to high volume yeah, of, of credible opinions, of real opinions from other patients. We have base profiles, um, again, of millions of doctors. Um, of that, we have doctors that have actually claim their profile and verify their profile and there's a few hundred thousand of those types of doctors and then we've got about 20,000 doctors that are actually paying for the premium product and we have about 17 million unique users visit our websites monthly um, obviously not everyone becomes a patient in the form of a booking um, so we actually have about 250,000 bookings right now coming through the system that we're processing monthly um, to date we've raised uh, 34 million US uh, which according to some sources, like the, the, the largest amount raised by a Polish company from VCs in history. So it's pretty cool. So we went from, um, from the seed rounds where we did 1 million, a series A for 3 million, and a series uh, B for 10 million. And now most recently in 2016, we did a big um, series C for 20 million, all US. We did take some money actually um, uh, from uh, EU funds uh, allocated for Poland, obviously that uh, one was directed at innovation, yeah? And so um, this concept of um, making healthcare more efficient and giving doctors a tool to communicate with patients um, was, was, was the one idea. The other idea, we, we had um, something called export-import, and so it was really exporting Polish ideas abroad. Um, and so we qualified for a project there. So it financed, the idea was to finance market entry into new markets for Polish companies that qualified. So um, at the beginning especially, you know, two, three years ago when we were starting out, um, that money was, was huge, yeah? It was very important. Their contribution to what we contributed was about a million dollars. A million dollars? About a million dollars across two or three different projects.